In this lesson, we're going to explore the various forms of a quadratic function and look at the types of information that each one reveals. At this point, we've discussed three different ways that you can write quadratic functions. Standard form, vertex form, and factored form. These functions all look very different, but they're actually equivalent. If we were to look at the graph for each, the graphs are exactly identical. And if we were to look at input and output tables, the input and output tables are 100% the same. So why would we want to choose standard form or vertex form or factored form over the others? Well, the truth is that each of them provides different types of information. The standard form shows us the y-intercept very easily. If you're looking to find the y-intercept and you want to get that without much work, standard form is the best way to go. Vertex form shows us the shift of the parabola from the origin. This parabola shifts right 1 and down 9, which allows us to know where the vertex is. We can use that information to determine the maximum or minimum y value that the function produces. And the factored form allows us to find the zeros or x-intercepts of the function by simply setting each factor equal to zero. So let's take a look at an example and see if we can determine which form is best to find each piece of information. Suppose we have a quadratic function. The function is written in all three forms, standard form, vertex form, and factored form. We want to use these various forms of the function to find the following, the y-intercept, the vertex, the maximum or minimum, and the coordinates of the x-intercepts or zeros of the function. Let's start with the y-intercept. Which form would you choose? If you said standard form, that's the best choice because the y-intercept is the constant term. So whenever you're looking for the y-intercept, although you can find it in any form, the standard form is the easiest way to go. In this particular function, we can see that the y-intercept is negative 3. Now, which form would you choose to find the coordinates of the vertex? If you said vertex form, you're absolutely correct. The vertex form tells us the shift of the parabola from the origin. This parabola went left 1 and down 4, which allows us to know the coordinates of the vertex. The vertex is at the point negative 1, negative 4. So when we want to find the coordinates of the vertex, the vertex form is the easiest way to go because that tells us where the vertex is located. Next, how about the maximum or minimum y value? Well, the maximum or minimum always occurs at the vertex. So, we should use the vertex form in order to find the minimum or maximum value. In this example, the vertex is a low point. It is a minimum. So the minimum of the function is negative 4. How about the zeros or the x-intercepts? Which form would you use there? If you chose the factored form, you're absolutely correct. We set each factor equal to 0 solve those equations, and use those points in order to find the coordinates of the zeros. So whenever you want to find the x-intercepts or the zeros, you should use the factored form. In this function, the zeros are at the points 1, 0 and negative 3, 0. So in summary, any time you want to find the y-intercept, you should use the standard form. When you want to find the vertex or the maximum or a minimum, the vertex form is the most convenient form to use. And when you want to find the coordinates of the x-intercepts or the zeros, the factored form is your best bet. This is everything you need to know to work with the various forms of quadratic functions. Remember, you can learn more about quadratic functions in Mr. Dory's Algebra Handbook, available at www.dorypublications.com.